Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Ford, and we are here for another poetry discussion, a poetry discussion which will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one, obviously, being the poetry discussion playlist, but number two being the Emily Dickinson poetry discussion playlist, a playlist dedicated exclusively to Emily Dickinson, now over the 70 video mark, I believe. We're somewhere thereabouts, okay? Uh, but the poetry discussion playlist is now in the 250s, I believe. No, it's not 250s. I'm exaggerating, okay? But I'm excited because we're here with more Emily Dickinson. And uh, this is a poem that we were talking a little bit last time about... We were talking a little bit last time about how Emily Dickinson really concentrates on on the summer months. She really has a proclivity towards the summer in her poetry and the summer being good. Now, you could obviously uh, make extractions about that. There's something known as um, winter or seasonal depression, things like that, that come up oftentimes in the winter, uh, the Northeast of the United States having much more uh, disastrous, disastrous types of winters than many parts of the country. So the winter would be even today, something more difficult to survive than the summer for sure. But in Emily Dickinson's time, the mid 1800s, certainly that would have been the case. So it's a little bit easy to see why the summer would be emphasized, but we have here a little bit more of a delving into not necessarily why the summer is emphasized, but why the winter is so miserable. So besides the autumn poets sing uh, is the poem in question for today, and it reads as such, besides the autumn poets sing a few prosaic days, a little this side of the snow and that side of the haze, a few incisive mornings, a few ascetic eves, gone Mr. Bryant's golden rod, Mr. Thompson's sheaves. Still, is the bustle in the brook, sealed are the spicy valves, mesmeric fingers softly touch the eyes of many elves. Perhaps a squirrel may remain, my sentiments to share. Grant me, O Lord, a sunny mind, thy windy will to bear. So, what we have here, what we're looking at, is we're looking at sort of this descent uh, besides the autumn poets sing a few prosaic days, a little this side of the snow and that side of the haze, we are slowly slipping from the summer to the fall to the winter. A few incisive mornings, a few ascetic eves. Yeah, the sunset looks kind of nice this time of the year, but gone are Mr. Bryant's golden rod. This is from William Bryant's The Death of Flowers and Mr. Thompson's Sheaves. James Thompson's The Seasons, the poem in question here. Still is the bustle in the brook. Sealed are the spicy valves. Mesmeric fingers softly touch the eyes of many elves. Everything is going to sleep. Everything is stopping. Everything is dead. Perhaps a squirrel may remain in the winter. They're, you know, they got to come down a little bit, right? They got to eat something, right? They're not getting through the whole winter. My sentiments to share. Grant me, O oh Lord, a sunny mind. Give me a little bit of that summer. Let me keep a little bit of that summer to get through your windy winter. Now, the um, a lot of the, I think, commentary that you're really prone to find about this poem are going to be about the fact that what happens here is that the poet is sort of slowly descending into what it means to be in the winter and how difficult that is for the poet. Um, so that even the poetry... So, so I'm not going to get to that part yet. I jumped the gun. 
I didn't mean to go that far yet. So what we have is the poet who is sort of really concentrating on the the seasons. The seasons change. Would this really hit so many people all this hard? Should it hit this many people all this hard? It is really a problem for the poet. The poet seems to be emphasizing something here. Something big to the poet. What is it? What are we looking at? Why are we here? Well, it seems to me that there are two different small things that stand out in this poem that are really sort of weird in this poem. When we start looking at the general motif, we're looking at the, um, the season fade away, the, <clears throat> all of this stuff, the, the movement stops. The season fades. But there's two things that kind of stand out. Here we have some references to poetry. Well, okay. Well, this is a poet. We talk about on the channel oftentimes how music mentions music. Movies talk about movies. And literature talks about literature. So what's the big deal? Okay, there's nothing particularly off about that. A little bit later, however, there's this squirrel. There's this weird appearance of a squirrel when everything had stopped. But it's not just a squirrel. It's a squirrel with whom our poet may share sentiments. Now, why is this weird? Why is it weird? It could just be mentioned, you know, except that we have here a poem about the autumn poet singing. Well, what are we to do with that? What are we to make of the fact that our poet mentions both poetry and squirrels? Who cares? Why is it a big deal? Because it's the only, they are the only things out of touch with generally talking about the season change. So is there something to be taken from this? It seems that our poet does not simply get cold in the winter. That's not the problem. It seems that our poet loses company in the winter. Our poet says, besides the autumn poets sing a few prosaic days, gone, Mr. Bryant's goldenrod and Mr. Thompson's sheaves. Is she simply talking about the subjects of those poems, or is she talking about the poetry? And if it is the poetry in general, there is a dialogue between a writer and writing. There is a dialogue in the same way that our poet here mentions other poems, other poets. Every poem is a letter to the poets that the poet has read. Every short story written is a letter to the other short stories that author has read every novel a letter to the other novels the author has read. And so, when we get down to this bottom of the poem, where that weird little squirrel pops up, perhaps a squirrel may remain my sentiments to share. Grant me, O Lord, a sunny mind, thy windy will to bear. Our poet is not simply praying for a squirrel. The squirrel is a stand-in for the poetry, probably the receiving part of the poetry. The poetry seems to leave our speaker in the winter. The poetry seems to leave our speaker both in the reading and the writing. 
That is why these poems are picked in order to show what is missing from the poet's life and why our poet heading into the winter is praying. Grant me, O Lord, a sunny mind, thy windy will to bear. This happens directly after our poet is begging for a squirrel to remain. Please, please let me keep my poetry through the winter. Nothing else is there for me. Please let me have this thing. Throughout your God-forsaken winter, throughout the winter that you decide to put me through, dear Lord, oh Lord, through this, what kind of struggles can we imagine our speaker sustaining through the winters? Losing the will to read, losing the will to write, losing any semblance of society, losing any semblance of kinship that our speaker seems to have through poetry. It's gone. It's gone in the winter. Maybe this is why we get such loving praise from Emily Dickinson's poetry for the summer months. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you enjoy what I do here, hitting the like button really helps me out here on the channel as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, I drop videos about literature all the time. Literature is the only thing that I talk about here. Maybe I should get a squirrel for a mascot if Emily Dickinson is giving us these squirrels that may remain likening them to poetry. So, uh, hey, I, I drop all sorts of videos about literature. There's poetry every Monday at least, and I hope to have you back for the next one.